Yes, now, yes, now, it now is, you did. It is. Sometimes it's not clear. We're good. We're good. The solid part really confusion there, but we're back with us. We just wanted to announce Pastor Gary is going to be sharing with us next Sunday. Brother Paul is actually going to be sharing with us the twentieth. The 20th that Wednesday night, and we'll have some probably some others. Pastor Gary's going to be sharing some more as the Lord allows us. And we'll have some working on some other speaker times that we might have. Uh, January sometimes it's a little quieter for them, but who knows what the Lord has? And uh, like we said, we want to have it, we want to be have it open to the Lord and His plan. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But um, we do want to share with us a message, and that message tonight is from Matthew chapter 6. We're going to follow along in the scriptures. Matthew chapter 6. Again, in verse number nine. This is a very familiar passage of scripture, but in reality, a lot of people pray this and they don't think about what they're praying. This is the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter six and verses nine through thirteen. And you're welcome to read it, read this along with us and uh, along with me up here, because how many of us know we need the prayer? We need to pray what the word says. His word is true, and we pray what it says. All right. Verse 9 and beginning. So, y'all want to go with me? Please do. And if you wouldn't mind saying tonight, if you have the ability to in the house. All right, read it. And if you want to read again, read with me. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray again. Father, we thank you for your prayer. And truly yours is the kingdom. Truly, you are the one we seek tonight to uh, illuminate your word. Show us from what you taught your, your disciples and those your followers. Show us, dear God, from this prayer tonight how we might see your face in this night and in the year ahead. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. 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 I love this little story. There was a man that was telling, talking to another man, and he was kind of a little bit put out with him. And he said to the man, you know, he thought he was good being a little bit holier than thou. And he said to this other man, he said, now, if you're so holy, you need to pray the Lord's Prayer. And so the other man said, all right, I'm going to do that. This is what he prayed. Now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And the other man looked at him and said, I didn't think you could do it, but you did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sometimes we, we pray the words and the words lose their meaning, is my point. And we've got to have the understanding. Jesus taught this for a reason, and we need to have it down. We need to know what it says. We need to know the Lord's Prayer, but we also need to let it sink in. And we want to pray something tonight, so we, we won't go into all the Lord's Prayer, but I want to go into four parts of the Lord's Prayer, four specific things that we're, we're going to talk about praying. And that's at the end of the prayer. And we'll focus mostly on verses 11 through 13. And so tonight with that, I, I want us to look at some of the, the verbs here. You know, nouns are good to pray. But if you're, if you're ever like me, you get careful, you get to rattling off. You know, you get to pray in front of the dog. You get to pray in front of the, you know, the church. You get to pray in uh, extra special prayers for Brother Woody, right? You've got to pray hard for him. I need him. Yeah, I need that's him. right. But, and so we, we have the names down, we get that, but so God wants us also the verbs. There's some good verbs here too, and the verbs are the action. What does God need to do? And I believe he wants us to pray those. He gives us some right here that we do want to look at. To be I believe the Lord wants us to be specific as we pray. So what do we ask God for? Give, give us this day our daily bread. And aren't you glad we serve a giving God? He gives to us good things. And tonight we're talking, not, and just as an aside, we're talking not probably a lot of stuff you may not already know, but we need a reminder that, hey, in this year, we need to pray. In this day, we need to pray. Amen. And to know that God hears those prayers and to know how we should pray because he told us. Our God is a God of enough, and he wants to give us good things, and we're confident he'll give us our needs. 
one day at a time, one day at a time. And uh, this church, you as individuals, people watching us out there, there's some big needs. There's some big needs. And I'm glad, though, that they don't have to all be solved at once. Have you ever had something just kind of overwhelm you and yeah, too man. much? I was thinking about my other job with the waste coordinating in January. It may be a very busy month for me. I'm like, about this, I got to check on this, I got to work on this, and go to meet. You got all this stuff you do, and you rattle it off, and it almost is overwhelming, isn't it? But if you stop and say, it doesn't all have to be done today or even tomorrow. We got it, we can space it out. And I encourage us, I believe the Lord by saying our daily bread, He is telling us, hey, you can do this one day at a time. We got this in the name of the Lord one day at a time, working through this just a bit by a bit. And I'm, I'm thankful that he, he is with us this day. There was a lady, and I love this story. She she ran a little inn in England. A man asked her about a, a message that was scratched on the window one time, and, and she said this. Uh, she was saying, I couldn't face my days. It was too overwhelming for me. And so I read this verse in the Bible, and you may have heard it. This is the day the Lord has made. And so I thought, wow, this day is the day the Lord has made. And so she carved it on her window seat. She carved it up there, and uh, I... And, and when she said she opened up her blinds every day to look at that window seal, she saw that there and she realized, yeah, now I can face my days because I had that reminder that this is the day. It's what yeah. she put. This is the day. And uh, so however we can put it up there to remind us that we can do it today, one day. He meets our needs. And I believe we should ask him to give us good things. He's a good father to give us just what we need. Amen. We want to talk about forgiveness, too, because as we, we look and we think about forgiveness, it's something we talk about in church a lot, but we want to remember, even if we've been Christians a long time, we all make mistakes and sin, and that we all come up short. In fact, First John says, if you say you don't, then you kind of need to look at yourself. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, and that's what the Lord says here. We confess and turn away from wrong. And the word forgive here is used about 140 times in the, the New Testament, and that word forgive means to cancel the debt, canceling out the debt, or to kind of put it behind. And the Lord does that for us. He cancels that debt for us. And I'm thankful for that, that God is willing to let go of those things that we've done and the sins that we've committed. Sometimes it's so, it's, it's hard to even believe it because of all the good that it is that he does. He is very much willing to cancel it out. If we need to repent to him the first time, or we need to come back to him again, he is there, and I'm thankful for that, that he's here in those prayers, seeking forgiveness. As someone put it, some prayers are please, some prayers are thank you, and some prayers are sorry. But you know, probably some of the hardest sometimes are the sorry prayers, to say that we're sorry, and to come to the Lord. And, and I, I encourage us that as the altar is there for us, that we need to come to the altar and pray. You know, a lot of people are afraid to kind of come because they're afraid of, Maybe what somebody will think about them or what's there. And I had a guy put it, it's true. You really worry more about the people that don't come to the altar than the ones that do. You know that? Yeah. If you need to come to the altar, you need to come to the altar. If you need to pray, you need to pray. Don't let something stop you or what somebody thinks about it stop you. And I, I just encourage us that we need to get, as, as best as the Lord allows us, beyond just about what people think about us and to be open and before the Lord, to come before him in humble repentance. Because we're, if we're all honest, we're all there in that place. Amen. We're all there. And I'll talk about that more in just a minute. Um, we also have to forgive others. It's very clear in the Lord's Prayer. This is, again, this is basic stuff, but we need it because 2021 is going to be a pretty rough year if we're walking in resentment and unforgiveness. If we haven't forgiven those that we need to do. And it doesn't matter. Um, you can try really hard, and sometimes it crops up on us. And I'll tell this story. Briefly, I, there was a, a, a brother. Uh, he was a, he was kind of a military sergeant. He kind of thought of himself as the sergeant. Of course, it was a military church, a lot of military folks. And he was he was there. And he did some things. I thought he was kind of being a little bit too pushy and trying to take over a little bit. And so I got mad. So I took it to the church, and the church kind of got on him, and he got really mad, and we weren't speaking at all. I really should have gone to him first, but I did. I went to the church and kind of did it. He said, "You're slandering my name all over." The place. And so he was mad, and, and then, then I got mad, and it was just a really hard. And I would stand up there to preach, and I didn't because it was his fault. You know, it, it always is, is the other's fault, right? 
And I would have felt that way. And uh, I stood up there, though, and I couldn't preach. I had, I, it was just like a big block. It was like a, nothing was happening that needed to happen. I remember we did a, if memory serves, I was on a trip with the youth. And a lot of youth were getting touched. Nothing happened for me. I was walking in the, in the unforgiveness. And so eventually I had to go to this guy's house. And I had to just, I basically stood there and said about two words. And one of the Korean ladies came out and started trying to talk. He said, no, 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 don't come out and talk. We're getting someplace. And I said about all the two words because he needed to unload all that had happened. But it was good because sometimes people just need to tell and get, get this out and get it out. And he did. And, I, and eventually I had my say too, and we put it behind us. And I knew we put it behind us when he gave me a Twinkie and said, here's your Twinkie. And I never, here's this for you. I knew that it was doing better then and we could walk better with that because we made the amends. And I told that story to say this, uh, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we need to look and see if there's anything that is blocking us. Maybe there's something we don't really realize because it can creep up on us unawares. But that bitterness is not what God wants for us. He wants us to walk in forgiveness. As, as Brother Gary put, the devil reminds us of things, doesn't he, sometimes? But even if it's as, if we've got to do it a hundred times a day to, to forgive, and then, hey, I let this go. We, we, we understand we're in a battle, and when God helps us to overcome, and we will see victory as we hang in there and believe and give those, and don't let that come back to us. But some of the resentment stop us this next year. But the third one we have for us tonight, lead us from temptation. And how many of us know, without even me saying, our world is full of temptation. There is enough temptation to go around, and I don't have to tell you what all they are. But we don't need to stand in our own power. We need to stand in God's power because he needs to lead us. Remember, that's a, that's a pretty good verb there in it, leading us. And he will lead us. Uh, and uh, we need his power and we need to, to listen to the conscience that he gave us in God's voice. And he'll speak to us those things. And I, I have said it and I put it this way in the past. I can pray this prayer. But if I go to the grocery store when I'm hungry, I'm probably going to be pretty tempted to buy some stuff I shouldn't. You ever been there? It happens a lot. It's temptation. We buy the, I buy some junk food when I don't need it when I go to the store. And I, but I want to talk a little bit more serious about this because temptation is real. It doesn't respect persons. Uh, I was reading this week in an article. Uh, you know, there were some Christian leaders that fell this past year that, that they had some issues. One in particular is very well known. He wrote tons of books. He actually passed away this past year. And I won't mention his name. Uh, you probably find it if you wanted to. Uh, but he was what they call Christian apologist. He was very, very, I mean, way up there in the major leagues, he would call it that. And um, a lot of people were really touched by his ministry and turned to the Lord through his ministry. But what, it, what they found out is there's clear evidence because he also owned some massage parties. And when he owned the massage parlors, what he did is he got himself into trouble. He was too tempted to do bad things in the, of the sexual nature and assaulted women. And uh, these women, it said they interviewed him after that, and they, they were really struggling even to believe in God or go to church after that because of what he did to them. And it's pretty clear evidence that he did that. That's not a very happy thing for me to say, is it? But I had a reason for saying all that, even as hard as that is. Um, because we can look at somebody else and point at them, but also, guess what? Were it not for the grace of God, where would we be? Amen. Were it not for God's grace, where would we be? If, and the point is, if it could happen to him, it could happen to anybody. You've got to look. You've got to watch ourselves. Right. Lead us not into temptation. We have to check ourselves. Because it's easy to point at somebody else. And yes, people shouldn't do that. And there should always be accountability. We should have, all have accountability in what we do. Uh, and to be close to our brothers and sisters in, in our times of temptation. But we've got to look at our hearts. We've got to come to our hearts with the Lord and say, this year I want to have that, that an open heart before the Lord to let him not even have that a hint of things like that. And um, Jesus told us that we are to be led away from temptation. You know, it's a lot easier, it's a whole lot easier not to take that drink than when you're actually drinking and you're drunk to try to get out of that fire, or get out of that, that bad situation. You know that? And so the reason I say that is we need to be we need to stop before the temptation gets further down the road. It's a lot easier to stop then than it is later. 
And so, Lord, help us to look at the temptation and deal with it as soon as we can and to remain accountable. Amen. Amen. Lead us from temptation. Deliver us from evil, it says here. Many blame so many others when in trouble. Uh, but what does the Bible say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, against the principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this world. The devil is real. If you're out there and you believe he's not, he is. He really is real. And he, he does catch us when we're weak and tempt us with all kinds of trouble. But Jesus gives us victory and delivers us from that. I serve, we serve a delivering God. Amen? He delivers Amen. you and me from all the, the, the temptations of the enemy. And just as an example, maybe you've been there this year too. Sometimes I'll read the news or I'll watch the news and I'll get uh, what might be called an ungodly angry. You know there's a godly angry and there's an ungodly angry. And sometimes you can feel that ungodly angry kind of welling up in you, and it's not good. And I realize there's a spiritual power behind that, and I've got to turn to the Lord in that time. Lead me from this, deliver me from this, and he does. He does, and he'll kind of calm it down. And so, um, you know, we, we can feel our blood pressure rise. I can almost feel, you can almost feel the physical change sometimes when you're so angry. You're reading this stuff that's happening, and the political scene is not a pleasant place to be. We're doing lots of reading, if, as you may no, and we just have it sometimes. But I encourage us. There is a there is a sometimes a repentance again that has to come, but there is a deliverance that comes when we turn to Him. And so I encourage us. We walk in, walk in. Let's not walk in halfway deliverance from evil, Amen. But to say, Hey, deliver us from all manner of evil, because sometimes uh, we get one thing really good, we struggle with the other. I encourage us this year to turn it all. Turn everything we have over to the Lord Jesus and let him move. Closing this down, there was a preacher named Spurgeon who was asked what his secret was. He said, how, how do you do so? He was a preacher, a Baptist preacher in England. He said, how do you do so well? And he, he showed the guy, the guy that asked him, he opened the door and found him. He showed a bunch of people praying for his upcoming services. The secret really is truly prayer. Amen. That's how we see victory coming. Prayer will change us, this church, this area, this nation, this world. They'll change it all if we're willing to do it and to step in and pray. And so we're going to do that now with the time that we have left. And Aaron, if you if you would, um, if you'd come on in ahead and put on some really soft instrumental music for us, please. I'd like to take a little time and to pray for us for some different things. Is really solid for us at this point. And we'll actually dim the lights just a little bit again. We're kind of going back and forth on the lights and take the lights down just a little bit more. This time. If any is willing to volunteer to pray at this point, we do encourage that. And we encourage folks to so willing to help us to pray for some of these things that they can. We do want to pray for our world. How many of us know we have a world that really is hurting and in need of men? We have a world in need. And so we can bring different aspects of that out. But I did want to bring out the idea of missionaries that have gone out. Um, we, we believe, the Assemblies of God has always believed in missions and as in many other churches, but we believe that really it's it's the heart we taking the gospel of the Lord. But it's been a hard year for many of them. The finances, the fight you raise money in the assemblies, you go around to different churches and raise money, and it's been hard to do that this year because of uh, the, the circumstances everybody knows. Can we pray for that? If someone will lead us in prayer for that, that, that the Lord will minister to the missionaries and also to the church around the world that the Lord will minister to that church. And uh, there been a lot of leaders, of course, they have the same problem. I have preachers all over the world, they talk about they can't raise the money or, you know, they can't have services and they're trying to support their families and can use that blessing. But how many of us know we can have open doors in times like these? Oh, God opens doors and in my life it wouldn't be open otherwise. Would someone be willing to pray for that for us tonight and lead us in prayer? Anita, would you mind to, would you mind to come up and pray with that? Would you be willing to do that? If you're at home.
Carmel, can you just agree with us and pray with us as the sister leads us? She has a heart for the missions and a heart for the, the, the Christians. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, because you are faithful, Lord, and your promises are yea and amen. And Lord, today we just thank you and seek your faith, Father God, for your missionaries around the world that are serving you, God, in hostile countries even, Lord God. Lord, that you would just put a hedge of thorns and a wall of fire about them, Father God, that you would encourage them by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to keep endeavoring, Lord God, to not give up, God, but to keep going forward, Lord, and that you provide and meet every need that they have, Lord. I've read many things about Lillian Thrasher and other ones, God, that you supernaturally met their needs, God. Your hand's not short that you can't provide for them, Lord, but you spread your arms wide, God, and I just ask you do this for your missionary people, God. And for your church, Lord, time and again, I've heard testimonies from your people, God, where you've interceded and miraculously provided, Lord God, even for the orphanages and for the missionary families, God. And right now, I just pray that you would just burden your people's heart, Lord, to intercede for the missionaries, God, and to reach out even with funding, Lord God. Even when it seems like we wouldn't have enough, Lord, that we would share, Lord God, because I know we have more than enough, Lord. And I thank you, God, for your people, Lord, that are willing to share, God to see your gospel go forth and for the missionaries' needs to be met. Lord, I bless everybody in Jesus' name that would have any part in blessing your people, God. Lord, they're blessed, I know, Father, just from helping them. Lord, and I just ask you would encourage them right now, Lord, and your church, God, to rise up and keep supporting the missionaries, God. I know you bless us and you bless many churches for doing this, Lord, and that you would meet their needs according to your riches and glory and according to your will, Lord God, because your hand is not short, Lord. I know, Lord, that you pour out your blessings on your people, God, that are out there proclaiming your salvation and your truth, Lord. And I pray that you continue to do this, Lord. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for doing this, Lord. Thank you for your encouraging me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your prayer. Something else we want to pray for. We know the virus is... is, is it's been there, and it's done so much. But we also know that God puts his head, as we believe, around people and protects them and delivers them. And we want to believe for that in this new year, that God is going to be a shield and a protector for those that maybe already have it and to protect those that, that, that don't at this point. And we do want to pray for that situation. Would someone like to volunteer and lead us in a prayer for that? I will pray for us then, and we will agree. Father, we thank you, dear God, for the attacks of the enemy, dear God. What the enemy would steal and turn for harm, you can turn for good. We stand on your word tonight, that, Lord, you are the protector, that the pestilence will not harm us, as Psalm 91 proclaims, that, Lord, it's not going to harm us, that, Lord, you may see, see things that have happened, but, Lord, we know that you are a protector, we know that you delivered, dear God. We know it was a rough year last year with that. But we stand in the name of Jesus in 2021. There will be victory. And then, Lord, not just victory just for itself, but more so that your name might be glorified, dear God, in lives, how you protected people that didn't get sick, and how that those that were were raised up from their hospital beds, that were raised up and that they can breathe. Lord, I know for me, you delivered me from the sickness and several others in this church, dear God. We celebrate that. But today we ask for protection and a wall of fire as a sister prayed, just to go around those, dear God, trusting you for it. We believe, dear God, for you are the protector and the healer, dear God, of this. And we pray as people get the vaccine, there won't be harmful effects from that, but that, Lord, people will indeed be protected. But most of all, people will trust you. Oh, that they will trust you, dear God, for their protection and you will not disappoint. We believe that all over the world that you will work for your glory so that people might be saved and know that there is a protecting, loving God that delivers. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I did want to pray for something else a little bit more on the national scene. As many know, this next month, there's a lot of things going on as far as election. There's an election this week, in fact, uh, that's going on. Um, two days, and uh, we want to pray for that down in Georgia. We want to put that before the Lord. It's very, it's a very, very important election, as folks know. 
down in Georgia. We want to also put before the Lord the situation as um, several folks are coming into power. Um, there's a lot going on with that, but we want to put it, even this week, a lot's going to come down with that, and we want to put that before the Lord for his good plan to come to pass. And would someone be willing to lead us in prayer for that? No one had, if you don't have, if you don't want to come up front, that'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your healing virtue, Lord. And Lord, we know there's an enemy trying to bring America down, God. God, we we just ask you to intervene, Lord. When you told Hezekiah he was going to die, he turned his face to the wall, and you give him 15 more years, God. And Lord, we need a few more years in this country. God, we ask you to intervene and come against and destroy the works of the enemy. Those that would destroy this nation, Lord. There are so many of us that fought for the freedom of this country, God. And we want to remain free. Yes. God, we, we want our churches open. God, in your healing virtues is with us every day, God. And you said if we would humble ourselves and pray, that you would heal our nation, God. And we're, Lord, we're just praying for a healing of the nation, God. Yes, God. Yes. Not only a healing of the nation, but for a healing in this world, God. And we know that one day, one day that the Antichrist is going to come to power, God. But if you would for us, push it off for a few more years that we can get our loved ones in. A few more years that we can have revival in the church, that the church can be perfected and lifted up, and the power of God is where your people come together and where they dwell, God, in all of our homes, God, send revival in the land, and Lord, let it spread around the world, and God, that healing and and love and faith and virtue. Come in your name, God. Just lift up Jesus Christ and let the world see the glory that is in God. Let the world see the awesome power of God working mightily in every life and in this nation. And God, we ask this that the world may say, There is a God in heaven. Yes. There is a God yes. in heaven. And Jesus Christ reigns above all, God. Show the world, let us be a light that's set on a hill, God, that the world may know that among God, your people, that you live and you reign and your power is awesome and mighty. Yes. And Lord, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I believe at this point we'll go ahead and we'll stop the video for us. We're so glad you tuned in with us. And I do want to say this before we go. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, this is the night to find him. Amen. Amen. Today is That's the day right. of salvation. Turn your life over to him because we, we think about the year ahead, but we understand he can come back. Amen. Right. And so stand, and if you're trusting Jesus, stand with him and continue to pray and you believe him. We just pray God bless you richly. Thank you.